in our resident council. They're called junior reps. They were elected last November. We welcome them. And then we have back uh, senior reps who are serving their second year on the council. To my right is next year's president, Ralph McMillan is vice president. To my left is Sandy Reinhardt, with whom none of us could get along without because of her technology background and her ability to get everything we're doing up on the resident council app. And next to her is Bev Rogers, our new treasurer. So I welcome all of you, and our CEO is here. So we're going to ask Cole to come up and uh, begin our meeting with his presentation. Now, I do want to tell you that first and last names are important. So we know this is Cole Marvin. Uh, that's for sure. Um, the first time Martin I Cole. attended a meeting, I only learned the first names of people. So as chairpersons were giving their reports, I really was... It was incomplete. So I'm going to ask you as you come to the mic this morning, please give your first and last name. That will be true if you have a question from resident council and you speak into the mic, please your first and last name and then the same in the audience for anyone who has a question. So welcome, Cole. Thank you. Good morning, Cole Marvin. So, sometimes, uh, sometimes called Marvin Cole. Thank you. I respond to either. Uh, going to start off with our marketing report, talk a little bit about what's happening there. Um, we have no sales for the month, and that's unfortunately because we have nothing to sell. <laughs> we did have two closings. Uh, two folks moved in. They were both cottages, which is always good. Uh, we actually added five more people to what we call our ready list. Our ready list are people that have put $10,000 down. Uh, and are basically in a line looking to uh, get into uh, existing inventory. Uh, by adding those five, that takes us up to a total of 63 slots, uh, which consists of 80 people when you're looking at double, double occupancy. So that list continues to grow, and we continue to try to chip away at it. The two closings that uh, we had this month are people that are coming off the ready list and moving in. So that is good. Um, we are looking <laughs> for things to sell, and we decided we were going to move uh, the sales counselors that was occupying a cottage, as well as the move-in team that was occupying a cottage. We have moved them into the courtyard apartments and are in the process of setting up offices for them, which will open up two cottages that we can then sell and or accommodate folks on that ready list. So looking for opportunities all the time. We are working on our 40th anniversary party. We're looking to make a big deal out of this. And uh, we have March 27th as the scheduled date. They are always on a Friday. And so March 27th is what we're looking at. We're uh, finalizing our themes and um, big ideas. And I, I can promise you it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I'm looking forward to it. And uh, there will be more to follow on that. We had an open house at the healthcare center yesterday, and it was a smashing success. Um, uh, depending upon what you know or don't know, the occupancy in the healthcare center uh, was something at one time was a problem because we were always afraid we wouldn't be able to accommodate residents. Uh, and then we have seen that occupancy dial back a little bit, uh, a little farther down than we would prefer. So we actually hired a person uh, who specializes in occupancy development, uh, someone that has a lot of relationships with insurance companies, hospitals, uh, uh, relationships of that nature. Um, and her name is Tiffany Wright, and we've added her to the team. She's been with us for a few months, uh, and this was one of the big things that she wanted to do. She is very well connected out in the uh, long-term care uh, networking world and uh, man I tell you what all of her friends and everybody showed up yesterday they had a wonderful party mm -hmm. it was successful and really um, you know sometimes there's a lot of misconceptions about our healthcare center a lot of folks think you have to live here in order to get in there and so we're always looking to uh, dispel that myth uh, and ultimately help grow our occupancy which is what we're seeing happen we're seeing real positive growth over there which is good because that helps us financially uh, as an organization in terms of those revenues helping offset expenses. 
Um, February 28th, we will be having our annual employee awards banquet. It is quite the party. It is a ton of fun. It's something you all would be very proud of as we celebrate our employees. Uh, there's three ways to get invited there. Um, the first is having perfect attendance. Uh, the second is having been one of the 12 employees of the month of the previous year. And at that uh, event, we will announce the employee of the year. Um, and then the third way to get in is to having been here and worked for five or more years. So as you can imagine, we will have quite a healthy list of people that will be in attendance. And we're going with a country western theme this year. So mm. it should be a hoot. <laughs> um, I am happy and to announce that we did get the front gate opened, as you well know. And we did it one day before we said we would. Yay. So yay. And we did have a, a mishap, uh, not well, I guess it would have been last night, yesterday morning, uh, with our water being shut off. Uh, we knew that that was going to be shut off. However, we were told and under the impression that it would only affect our kitchen, which is why we did not communicate with our residents. So they uh, thought that they had it isolated enough to where that would be the only effect, and they were wrong. So uh, we apologize for that, and they're going to continue to uh, work closely with them to make sure we're all on the same page. So we can minimize the unexpected surprises that uh, you get when you're doing things like construction. So. Mm -hmm. And I think that is probably quite enough for me. Okay. Questions? Yes. Thank you, Cole. Any uh, comments or questions from our council? Yes, Sandy. Oh, sorry. Cole, I was coming into the village about 9.30 last night, and I noticed the very two front uh, lights, the big ones on the light poles, are not on. It makes it very difficult to see the entrance to the village before you hit the bus stop. The lights. Now, where are these lights? I'm sorry. The big brown lights that are at the very front of the driveway. Okay. Out on the street? Out, yeah, out on the street. Those two are not on. Okay. Thank I you. I will uh, let Matt know, and uh, we will have to take a look at that. Any questions from the audience? Okay. Cole, uh, the uh, manhole near the uh, gate, when do you expect to have that level with the pavement? Yeah, I saw that. I saw your email, and uh, I honestly don't know. I, Matt was aware of it. He saw it. You know, it was something we noticed as well, and I honestly can't uh, comment right now because I don't know, but we are aware of it, and my guess is that uh, we would get it fixed. What you see up there really is, is is phase one. When all of the construction is done, all of that will be repaved again Thank to look the way it is, so it's a matter of do we... What do we do with that right now? Because there is a significant amount of uh, height difference between it, but just know in the end that will all be as it should be. Ed, I'm gonna use you as an example. Um, I would have appreciated it if you had just said, I'm Ed Kearns, and then ask your question. That helps those of us here who may not know you. Thank you. Any other questions from the audience or from the council? Thank you, Cole. Thank you for your hard work. Thank you very much. You bet. OK, we will have approval of our December 27th uh, minutes. Uh, there was something in your mailbox to that effect earlier this week. so. I need an approval and a second to the minutes from December the 27th. I move the Thank you. Doris has moved that it be approved. I second it. Thank you, Bev. All right. Uh, we're ready for our treasurer's report, so our new treasurer, Bev Rogers, is on. Thank you. Um, our balance to begin the year is $421.40. Uh, this next week, all of you will be receiving in your mailboxes a request for $1 dues, uh, which we ask from e all of the residents here at Friendship Village. Um, there isn't a penalty if you don't pay your $1 dues. 
Uh, on the other hand, we also appreciate additional donations if you would like to make them. This money is used to help pay for some of the expenses of our committees and of our area representatives. I have already received a heads up from the Employee Appreciation Committee for supplies that they will be needing this next year. I encourage other committees and area representatives uh, to assess your needs and submit requests for payment as, as you need them. As always, the association thanks all the residents for their support and participation. Thank you, Bev. Any questions from the council? From the audience? All right, thank you, Bev. We've had our welcome, we've had uh, Cole's report. So we're up to action items. And um, in my opinion, there are no action items. Oh, maybe this is when we should do this. All right. Let's, uh, let's hear from Sandy Reinhardt. This actually falls under um, old business. You'll see on the agenda it says, hold on, distribution of vice president's duty uh, for the procedure manual. Um, resident council members, you were provided a copy of this form in your mailboxes. I was provided another copy by Bob Hembold this morning, which is, uh, which is uh, a different, slightly different in, in form. So I've spoken to Marty Whalen, and we're going to table this discussion until next meeting till we can confirm what wording will actually be in the procedure manual. So um, that's where we are on that one. And in, uh, in regards to the calendar of events, a calendar of events is being put together. Uh, the meeting dates are already on the uh, app, the community apps, and we'll be fleshing that out with the other requirements for uh, calendar activities. Thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you, Sandy. We do have a question. Neither Bobby nor I got what you're talking about. You it's in your mailbox. I personally put them in your mailboxes. Um, one of them was done Monday and the other was done yesterday about 6 o'clock. Yeah, we apologize for the late um, arrival of the yesterday's uh, stuff, but if you didn't get one and you don't find one in your box, uh, let me know and we'll get you a copy. Thank you. Um, all right, we do have some new business. Uh, we have um, Cheryl Kirk, who is our committee chairperson for our communications. So Cheryl, why don't you come forward here, please? Cheryl Kirk, can you hear me? I hope so. Gosh, I can hear me. Um, and this is not the committee report. This is the change. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. Oh, OK. Well. Um, What's sort of been going on is that, that we've had a committee that's had a name that really did not describe what it's been doing. So when our committee met for the first time on January 10th, um, we all said, gosh, who are we? So what we decided is that um, our, our, our focus is on, on technology. That doesn't include communicating technology, but we don't publish newsletters. We don't do, you know, communication. We don't manage any information gaps between the residents and 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 management. We all know there's a lot of technology going on around here, so we we just wanted to have our our committee describe more functionally what it actually does. So uh, what is our, our, our purpose? Our purpose is the committee shall assist, assist both Friendship Village residents and management in understanding, supporting, and communicating information about the various technologies in use at Friendship Village. And we, and, and we will use various um, communication tools to do this. So, but that, but, 
but our focus is trying to really decide what, what technologies are, are appropriate for, for, for Friendship Village and also to support them probably better than we're, do, than we're doing right now. So, so what do we do? Well, again, we're not looking to communicate, to further the communication between residents and, 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 and management, which is what really the focus of, of the old committee was. And that's really what every committee does to really some, some extent. What our focus is, is to, is to do various technology pro projects. So, um, and again, it just makes sense to more precisely acknowledge the role of technology at Friendship Village by renaming the, 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 the committee in a way that better describes its more updated mi mission. So, you all should have gotten something like in the mail. Um, and, I, and I emailed everybody on Tuesday, and if you didn't have an e email address, I put it in, in your box. But, but this, is, uh, this is what our committee is going to do. We're, we're going to use d different communication vehicles to gain a better understanding of the kinds of technologies our, our residents use on a regular ba basis. We're going to publish technology-related uh, uh, articles in, in the Villager as needed as, as appropriate. We're going to arrange for technology training sessions as requested by residents or staff. We're going to receive and listen to resident technology concerns and distribute them to the appropriate group for resolution. And we're going to continue to find and implement and promote technologies that assist the visually and hearing impaired re residents. And finally, and I'm a good example of this myself, we're going to interface with the media volunteers group, uh, which, includes, which includes the people in the back and me, uh, to gain a functional uh, understanding uh, of the audio visual systems in place in the SCRM, the rec center, and the private dining room. That's it. All right. What else can I say? <laughs> uh, are there any comments or questions from the audience? Yes, Rosemary Passini. You know, you have to push a button, Rosemary. Maybe Dick can do that for you so that you can okay, speak it's on. in. Does this mean that when we have questions, we come to you and T? Um, I, I, I would say if you have a problem, you should continue to go to IT to fill out, out a work o order. So we are, um, there are some uh, people in our group who will help residents, uh, but it's IT who is really the, the single point. Okay. You know, our, our whole technology, it is really a swamp. If you didn't think it was a swamp, then you aren't using te technology. There are networks, there are devices, there are all kinds of th things that have to work together. So um, what's really great, great about our, our, our technology is that, um, that, that on our, our, our committee, we have tra Travis Saunders and, and, and Paul N Nastop. So, so you, know, you can give us, I mean, we'd like the fee fee feedback, but if you are dead in the water and can't use your e your TV or your email, you don't want to wait for our next meeting. Oh. I, I wouldn't want to wait. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions Can from I the just... audience? Yes, all right. Please give me your first and last name as you question. My name is Douglas Hobson. I just wondered if you considered the name Technology Utilization Committee. Um, no. <laughs> I, I'm not saying it's a bad name. We, we had several iterations, and we kind of feel like the simpler the better, because we are, we are concerned with the function of technology, the use of technology, the understanding of technology, the, the you know, support of te te technology. And just saying te technology seemed to be the simplest. Thank you, Douglas. Anyone else? This is Ed Kearns. Yes, Ed. 
I think you might want to add the uh, interface with the administration to make sure that their use of technology is adequate, because in the past the committee has pushed the administration to make sure that their emergency system is working correctly and that they are communicating directly with the residents about a variety of issues. I think, uh, I think that's a good point, Ed. I might say that I think that's what our you know, mission statement says. Uh, so our, l let me just repeat that. Uh, the committee shall assist both Fringe Village residents and management in understanding, supporting, and communicating information about the various technologies in use at, at, at Friendship Village. So we haven't lost that you know, communication piece. Um, we just have, have a more technology fo focus to it. And that would include like emergency s systems as well. But probably every committee, if you think of it, has some responsibility to react to an emergency. It's not just our committee. It's every, you know, every committee could have an emergency. It could be safety, it could be all, you know. So I would, so I would say that whether it's stated or not, uh, should I agree. Be the, should be that responsibility. Yeah. Can I just add, Joan? Yes, is that, please. You know, this has taken, I might add, a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And thank you for your help, Marty and Jay, if you're out there. I mean, gosh, I couldn't have done this alone. Mm -hmm. um, what I would like to say is that can we just vote on really the name change mm -hmm. and let that go through? Mm -hmm. And if you want to tweak some of the wording, that's fine with me. But let the name change go through so we can uh, operate in the manner in which we'd like to. I agree. Let's uh, have that vote. Bob, I know you have a question, but unless it has to do with the name change, we'll wait on this for another time. Okay. Uh, council. Um, I will try. Um, I observe that our bylaws in section five specifies the committees by name. And one of them is the communications committee. Um, the, <clears throat> the proposed change to the procedures manual apparently does away with that name. Bob, let's take that up when Marty Whalen is dealing with procedures, manuals, and yeah, the and, like. the, and maybe yep. I can answer that. Has nothing to do with the name. We're going to yeah. vote now, Bob, on the name change. And please. again, we aren't uh, ignoring the the the, the, the bylaws. Mm -hmm. That cannot take place until the end of the year when the uh, yep. the association needs yep. to vote on that. Procedures so manual. Yeah. So only the council, is my understanding, needs to yes. vote on changes to the uh, pr procedures manual. Yeah. Marty Whalen's committee is working on that. It's gonna take him probably half the year, he told me, so. We're gonna vote, uh, we're gonna vote on the name change now, council. So, oh, yes? Would you like a motion? Yes, please. I move that we change the committee name from? Communications to technology. Is there a second? All right, thank you. All right, all those in favor of the name change from Communications Committee to Technology Committee, please raise your hand. Okay. It's been approved, Cheryl. Yes, <laughs> thank, thank you. you. All right, I believe we're ready for our resident council standing committee reports. So, um, accounting and finance, Larry Latham. Activities, Joe Madonna. Joe is uh, new to our resident, our village for the most part. She's fantastic. Her background is ASU and uh, work uh, as uh, an important administration. So, Joe, welcome. Thank you, Joan. Well, our, our committee, in addition to a new chair, has had some other changes due to um, normal attrition, 
and we've added some new members, so we're currently at 14 committee members. The first meeting of 2020 was held on January 16th, and at that meeting, um, Activities Director Connie Shryock, Shryock uh, reported that 136 people, including three guests, attended the New Year's Eve um, party and that everyone on the waiting list was accommodated except two people. The committee spent some time discussing ways to improve the reservation process for New Year's Eve events, and this topic will be revisited um, later this year again. 51 people attended the Robbie Robertson Trio concert on January 7th. 117 attended the Liz Wire um, storytelling event on January 10th, and 38 people attended the Dallas West concert on January 14th. On January 23rd and 24th, the upgrade to the AV equipment began in, in the skirm here began with the installation of a new projector and screen and additional equipment upgrades will be completed during the uh, week of March 2nd. Connie also announced some upcoming special events that include karaoke with Larry Latham, which has taken place now January, January 23rd, the nonagenarian celebration for um, villagers that are 90 and older took place yesterday. By the way, we learned that six people, um, there are 199 villagers over the age of 90, um, six people are 100 or older, mm -hmm. and our oldest resident is 105 years old. The Super Bowl party will take place February 2nd, There'll be a Valentine mixer on February 13th and a sweetheart dinner on February 21st. The job descriptions for the master of ceremonies and the greeters for the events here in the skirm were briefly discussed and um, the activities committee will meet again on February 21st. Any questions? Thank you very much, Joe. Let's see if there's any questions from the council. In the audience, yes. We need a mic here. Thank you. Thank you, Max. Okay. So Mike Ivanich. Um, so a question about the agenda. Some of the committee names have double asterisks. Is that significant? I'll answer that. Yeah, answer that. Yes, those committees only meet periodically during the year. If you look down at the bottom, we can't see it right here. Um, but I asterisk, I put all the committees on. Those that are asterisk meet several times a year but may not have uh, a uh, report for every meeting. It, if they had a meeting, why wouldn't they have a report? If they have a meeting, they do have a report. But okay. those committees with asterisks, what you just said. Those, those committees with asterisks mm. don't meet monthly. Okay, thank so, you. Any other questions for the activities chair? Thank you, Joe. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, I was going to ask uh, oh, the oh, chair oh. How, how many were at the uh, 90 and over again, did you say? Okay. I do, I do not know how many actually attended. I, what I did say, 199 people live at the village that are 90 and over. So, um, I, I, but I don't know how many of them made the event yesterday. I'll probably be able to report on that event next, I mean, next month, because it just occurred yesterday. Yeah. Folks, do you realize if they decided to have a revolution, they could overpower us? <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic, yeah. I'm sure Joe next month, yeah. Connie will have that information for us at the activities committee, and uh, Joe will have the number, but... I think it's absolutely amazing. Um, all right. Um, appearance, buildings, and grounds. Kathy Crawford. Thank you, Kathy. You bet. Good morning. Do I need to say my name again? No, oh, I did We're it good? for you. I'm sorry. No, that's all right. We uh, met the appearance, buildings, and grounds, and pool uh, 
Facilities Committee met on January 8th. I'm gonna go through real quick what Rich Cullick uh, reported on, because most of it's already, you've seen it happening as far as taking care of falling leaves, the holiday lights, taking down uh, several trees, whether they be here over the healthcare center. One of the things he did mention is that the, uh, their crews have been working along the canal fence that's been put in, and they've been painting and had put in approximately 55 plantings along there. Mm. In particular, Orange Jubilee is what they were planting. Matt uh, Roeder told us that they are working on uh, mm. options for the lift over at the swimming pool, and they pulled together residents who use that lift to uh, help them make a selection, but to bear in mind that it had to measure 16 to 19 <coughs> inches from the pool deck in order to comply with ADA regulations. Um, this week, I think we've all seen that they put in the, they're putting in the sidewalk south of uh, Nunn and Camp along the main drive where there was no sidewalk before. And a village recycling committee uh, was formed and Matt said that they met on Thursday, January 23rd. And I understand that's a new committee that he's put together. Um, we did have a few questions from our committee members asking about holiday lights around the south part of Nunning Camp and if there were electrical outlets there that could accommodate that. And then about the planter on the outside of the main entrance where you came in, where they usually have uh, like uh, geraniums and like that high. It's, it was a little wobbly. It looked like it could you know, pop over and so we asked about getting that repaired. And then Emily Garva told us about some of the uh, projects that were being planned for fiscal year 2020. And this is not an uh, inclusive list, but we're, it's a highlights of what she said were, were gonna happen. Replacement of some of the village uh, golf carts and trams, the addition of an ADA compliant golf cart uh, for use for, uh, by the tram drivers, purchase of two um, espresso machines, expansion of the Del Fuego as a dining venue, additional cameras throughout the village property, refurbishing of the second floor of the healthcare center, then replacement of the pool lift chair, replacement of the healthcare center chillers, continuation of the five part fiber optics project, and this would be part two, uh, replacement of silverware in the various dining venues, stucco work on cottages throughout the village, repainting of the rec center, and then a kind of a catch all replacement of equipment and refurbishing of property. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Kathy. Yeah. Any questions from the council members? Yes. yes. This is Jean Higgins hiding back here behind, <laughs> behind the <Kathy>. podium. <laughs> <clears throat> I guess this probably cannot be done. I don't know. I've wondered why with all the crud that's going around, there is no hot water in the women's restroom across the way. Which restroom? The one here in the center? Yeah. There's no hot water in there? Well, the water comes out cold, but it's a single faucet. So I don't know if that can be adjusted, but... Well, I will certainly ask what's going on. Thank you. Good question. Thank you, Jean. Anybody in the audience have a question for Kathy? Okay, you doke. Thank, Thank you, you, Kathy. You bet. All right, now we're going to hear from our Cheryl Kirk. This will be the Technology Committee report. I sort of feel like the star of the stage here. Um, <laughs> we, we had our first meeting on January 10th at 1, at 1 p.m. in Club Room 4. And we're still in, in the process of kind of sorting out what, what our membership is going to be. Uh, we have a lot of people, which is great. And I really wanted a mix of, of uh, both, um, both geeks, for lack of a better term, and people who were not as geekish. If, is that a word? And, uh, but, you know, because I think we can get carried away, but quite honestly, there's nothing more boring than sitting in a room with a bunch of geeks talking about the latest and greatest whatever. So, so we have a good mix, and I also wanted to add some more women, too, because uh, 
there's power in numbers. Um, and we have a very not knowledgeable and active group of staff advisors um, that include um, Emily Garba, Travis Saunders, and Paul, and Paul, Na Na uh, Paul Nastoff. So we talked about some of our projects from last year. And of course, the biggest, biggest, biggest project is, is, the, um, is the SCRM a AV upgrade, which is going on right now. So, um, and, and we're hopeful that our you know, media group will get trained to use the new system in, in, in February sometime, and that, the, and that the installation will be complete uh, in early March. Right now, it's the projector and the camera that have been installed. So um, cross your fingers, cross your toes, that everything works. Um, and uh, tra Travis Saunders uh, also reported that he's added more security cameras around the village. And probably the most interesting ca cameras are those that are mounted on the courtyard roof. So you can watch what's going on with all the uh, he heavy equipment. So, and, and if you haven't looked at that, you can go to, to, um, to community apps, and it's on the first page, it, it's the first button, and you just select FFT, Media Live Stream, and you can watch, you can watch the, the uh, pr progress live. Um, in terms of our 2020 pr projects, again, we talked a lot about the re renaming uh, uh, of the committee, which I will not go into anymore. And, um, and, and again, our, our goal is to find ways that we can better track what kind of technologies that our, that our users are, are either wanting to use, trying to use, or maybe not having too much luck in, you know, so, so, so you may find that we'll send out, out, out a survey to actually find out what is actually being used, who is actually trying to use it, and what we can do to better support what we have in place. That's it. Thank you, Cheryl. Any questions from council? Yes, um, Mr. Helmbold. Are you coordinating with the safety and security committee with regard to emergency response? Well, I would say, yeah. I mean, we aren't ignoring them. We've just had our first meeting. So, um, yeah, I, I, th I think emergency response. W apparently, when the committee was first in instituted, was sort of right after they had that ma massive po power fit. Fail, failure. So the concept of how, how do we communicate during emergencies was was very very important. It's still important, but they didn't have as many uh, systems and things in place. When I talked to Tra Travis Saunders prior to our first meeting, what he said is they have systems in place that handle the you know um, the, that kinds of um, co um, co communication during an, an emergency. Mm -hmm. So again, I, I think the systems are in place. And you know, what I would say is every committee should be working on some sort of like an emergency plan, because it doesn't just affect our, you know, committee. I would agree. Anyone in the audience? Yes, we have several hands. Hi, I'm Jerry Hall. Um, about several weeks ago and continuing on to this day, I have been trying to get sign on to resident apps and I, all I get is a screen with a, a request for a, a username and a password. And um, I call for help on it, but I, no, I haven't had any results yet. Okay, you know, Jerry, I had that same problem. So the thing to do is, uh, did you talk to, to, to the IT folks? That's what you need. Because um, if you send a work order and if you, well, you know what I would do would be to talk to Mimi and, and talk and see if you can get a, a, a phone number because there is, I mean, there is a way to get in, get in touch with them. And it, yeah, I, I mean, I can tell you what they did to my machine, but it may not be the same for you, but it took them just about two minutes to fix it. Yep. So that's the good news. Yep. Okay, uh, Ben Thompson, uh, do you have a schedule for the streaming video for construction? Um, 
I'm not sure exactly what you mean. It runs all the time. So it's going 24 7. 24 by 7. It's a little, little boring at night. Well, uh, <laughs> but it does. So, again, if, if, if you press that first button, you will see all the tractors and all that other stuff going yes, on. Yes, and I've experienced that, and it, it's, it's intriguing for someone who likes to play with, you know, tractors Toy, yeah. and things like that. Uh, but there are times that I go on there and I get absolutely nothing. <laughs> Oh, okay. I, I, I can't answer that. I will put it on my list to talk. Uh, we, we have a meeting coming up in a couple of weeks, so we'll see how that works. Uh, Doug Hobson again. Uh, is it your committee that will be following the progress on the installation of the high-speed internet system? Yes. Uh, will you be giving us updates on that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. I, 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 I was thinking that was one of the other projects that, that, that we talked about. So it's an ongoing thing, and it would be nice to know, are we 50% complete, 60% complete? What are, what's the ne next stage to be, to, to be worked on? So that's on our agenda. It's going on, though. Okay. Lots going on. Cheryl, any other questions? Thank you, Cheryl, very much. Mm -hmm. Okay, Marty Whalen, Constitution and Bylaws. Okay, um, Dining, Paul McEwen. No, Marty's getting on. Oh, Marty, I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> Marty's been kind enough to meet with me on two occasions to help me get up to speed on this important matter, Constitution and Bylaws. Marty Whalen. Yes, ma'am, Marty Whalen. I, I, uh, we, we've had, to the extent that this committee ever formally meets, we had a meeting this month in that we distributed Cheryl uh, Kirk's uh, proposed uh, uh, committee change. Uh, and, and there has been no, no response that has been uh, adverse. So to that extent, it's, it's cleared. Marty, can you put that mic so it's a little closer to your mouth? Thank you. We're getting several people asking, yeah, if you could speak Doris, louder. Can you hear that? Doris? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you all. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Marty. Uh, now, before you leave, Marty, any questions? Um, any questions from the audience? Okay, thank you, Marty. All right, our dining committee, Paul McEwen. Big, important committee. Paul's always here. Uh, thank you, Joan. Yep. I think you, when you started the meeting, you didn't give your own name, Joan Fenton. <laughs> and you're welcome, welcome to you. Thank you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the... Um, Dining committee meets on the third Thursday of each month, and this month it happened to be on the 16th. And then, uh, of course, this meeting is always the last Friday. There was a month last year where we met on the third Thursday, and the next day was the last Friday of the month. So we had one day to get the report together. This time it was two weeks. So some of the things we talked about in the meeting have already kind of happened sort of like some of the other uh, uh, committees. Um, the main thing that we talked about was the uh, uh, hours for the uh, fireside grill and the takeout. And there, there was an article explaining all that in last week's Villager. So you can uh, refer to that for the details of that, but basically takeout orders for the fireside <coughs> We'll start at 4 and go to 5.30. And the fireside sit-down dining room will open at 5. So there is an hour there for uh, the takeout, for the kitchen to be able to handle the takeout orders before the uh, orders come in from the uh, dining room. And, th and the reason for that is that the kitchen was being overloaded, and as a result, there were delays for the residents. Okay. So that's the, the story on that. Um, let's see the other. Let's see the other thing was. Let's see if I can get it here. The um, 
possible burger is coming up, is coming forward. And um, it's a, uh, a product that is, uh, looks like and acts like a hamburger, but it's really plant-based food. So that will start on, I think it's uh, on February 3rd, which would be Monday, in the Village Cafe. So it's, a, uh, it's an option. I mean, we're not going to do away with the regular hamburger, you know. But you can get this Impossible Burger if you so desire. <clears throat> and the other thing that was kind of a leftover from last summer when we went to the new point of sale terminals, you know, the, that the uh, uh, checkout people use, that the uh, people who had bingo cards could no longer use them at that, those terminals. And there was a technical reason for that, and technology committee could probably answer that. But uh, I don't know what the answer is. But, but what they did, they came up with a, 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 a product called, it's like a debit card, so that uh, bingo, uh, uh, people who have bingo winnings will be issued these cards, and they're like a credit card, uh, plastic. And uh, I think it's on the... Um, um, here it is. Well, that'll start on the 13th of February. So on the 13th of February, those people with bingo winnings will get these cards. And from then on, people who do have bingo winnings will be issued those cards with the, win the amount of the winnings on the card. In addition to that, individuals who are not bingo players as well can get these cards and treat them as if they were gift cards because they uh, can be used at any of the uh, dining venues, you know, the uh, Village Cafe, the Buffet, the Fireside, Embers, the uh, Garden Cafe, Del Fuego, whatever. And so uh, uh, they can be bought. You just go and buy one at one of the registers and they will give you the card and then you can use it. And when the card is used up, when, you've, when all the money's been spent, it, they ask that you send, give back the card to the register so they can be recycled and reused. Um, so that's the, uh, the main thing that we talked about at the meeting. There was, of course, we went through all the comment cards as well. Any questions? Very good. So anyone from the council have a question? How about from our audience? All right. <laughs> I made currents. Can you wait up there? <laughs> I'm Ed Kearns. Hi, Ed. I don't understand why we continue to have takeouts on the far side, which when we have it from nowhere else, and it continues to interfere with service on the far side, and I don't believe that's going to stop. I don't know why we don't do away with it. You better not. <laughs> I, use, I use it constantly, I every think, week. I, I, th I think that this was an attempt to uh, get away with that, get away from that interference, you know, uh, just to have that lead time and that the people who are going to do takeout try to get there early, get their orders in, and have the, the food delivered to them so it doesn't interfere with the people in the dining room. That was the intent of this. Now, it's a trial sort of thing. If this doesn't work, we'll have to look at some other things. But I think that the, the takeout situation uh, just started a, not long ago, and it was because of a popular request of the residents that, that, that they do that. And so I think doing away with it would cause a mutiny. That's Mike Ivanich, I just want to follow up on that and say that the part of the reason for the takeout existing is because of the fireside's inability to accommodate reservation requests and all of us know that that varies from month to month depending on their staffing levels uh, who's trained etc and so um, I think there are many valid reasons to have and continue to have a takeout option fireside yeah there's other reasons as well yeah yeah Mike I have grandchildren who come there wearing their jeans they love the food Grandma, we want to go and do the fireside carryout. 
Now, the reason that we're having to deal with these chime changes is because more and more people are enjoying that opportunity to take their food back upstairs, enjoy their family, and have the best food in the world. So um, thank you very much, and we'll continue to work on that. We may have to make another change. Max, you have someone. Yes. Is this a... I'm Jan Linson, a newbie at the village. Um, I was wondering if there's a way to use the resident app to order your dinner so that there, or even a call so that there's not that big clog <laughs> right by the registers. Also, I was thinking that um, before you call or before you use the app, um, to know what you're going to order rather than stand at the counter and go through the whole menu. Thank you. Any other comments? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll, I'll uh, bring that up. Now, election is one I don't think we will hear from today. Jay Adler. Uh, employee Appreciation and Gift Fund, no. No. Tom Poole, no, my secretary tells me. Health Services Advisory, I didn't get a report. Penny Ewan, no. okay. Safety, Security, and Transportation, Jerry Hall. Everybody is, is more amazed that I'm walking after a year of but, um, We have not really met this month. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah, we have not really uh, met this month. We had two people come to a meeting. I was not there. Uh, Stan was there. We have gotten our numbers for uh, members of the committee up to where Starting on the 13th, we will be having routine meetings. One of the things I would like to do is suggest to people that you come to a meeting. Uh, we're just starting out, um, but it's a good place to come and ask about problems. For example, um, the electronic golf carts, you know, uh, using them indoors. That was actually mentioned at a meeting before the accident happened, and so we were able to talk about it and discuss it. Um, you are more than welcome to come. If you have a concern, please call me um, or Stan, um, so, um, and we will be happy to get you on the agenda, or, or if you can't make a meeting, at least discuss your concern. That's about it. Thank you very much. Now, any questions from our council members uh, from the audience? Thank you, Jerry. We like to see you walking. You. All right. Our welcome. Oh, yes. Push the button. Nope, you've got to push the button. And hold it, right? Yeah. Penny Ewan is uh, on a, a road trip, but she created a handout that went into your boxes yesterday just after lunch regarding the uh, health services meetings that are next week. And she wanted to encourage anybody who wants to know more about the health services to come to one of those meetings there. Sign up under A. S sign up under A. And uh, it was in the Villager last week. And also now this is a reminder. All right. Thank you, Bev. Uh, our welcome committee, Pam Holden. I need walking lessons from you, Jerry. <laughs> Can you hear me okay? Yes. Um, the Welcome Committee, the 15 man member Welcome Committee held their monthly meeting on Thursday, January 9th, the second Thursday of the month. The committee welcome, the Welcome Committee member packet, which included the expectations and duties of committee members, was distributed along with the January move-in summary provided by the marketing department is from that summary that we assign hosts 
to incoming residents. In 2020, the committee will meet every month except August. We do not meet in August. The first welcome committee of 2020 was held on Thursday, January 16th. The following new residents were introduced. Karen Paul, David and Brenda, I'm not, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, Shetsley, Philip and Sharon Lentz, David and Jan Linson over there, Donna Presley, Roger and Doris Tilsley. The speaker was Emily Garber, our Associate Executive Director. We discussed the resident apps, and I'm sorry, a lot of you obviously missed that meeting. An informational service residents can use on their smartphones, iPads, and or computer. In 2020, there will be a total of six welcome copies. We have already had the first one. The remaining copies will be held at 9.30 on the third Thursday of the month, months of March, May, July, September, and November. Okay. That's it. So we don't have a welcome coffee in February. We have one in March. But the committee meets every month except August. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Pa, Pam, don't leave yet. Uh, I do apologize, Pam. I didn't introduce you as a new chairperson. The Newells had the committee for five years, and you are uh, their replacement, and they found you. So um, that's wonderful because you have a terribly uh, busy uh, committee. Now, we have a hand up. One thing I wanted to mention is the Welcome Committee and the Residence Council actually do the same thing. We are the Welcome Committee as well. And we should realize we need to work together. It is a joy because they're the same. We welcome the new people. They welcome the new people. So we're essentially doing the same thing. And I don't think that people realize that. Kathleen, I agree with you. Um, we all are welcoming new people, and as reps, we get the names of the people who are moving into our area. So we do need to uh, work together. Okay, thank you. Yep, thank you, Pam. All right, uh, we're at the point that says call to constituents so, council members, uh, are there issues that you wish to share at this time? Okay. Bob. I sh apologize for not mentioning this when the uh, Constitution and Bylaws Committee Chairman was up at the podium, but he snuck away too fast for me. Yep, we can't hear you, Bob, so you'll have to speak louder and into the mic, please. I will try that. Put the mic down closer. Thank you. Um, in, um, first of all, I want to thank Sandy for pulling the uh, Residents Association materials all together on the uh, community apps. That's that's a wonderful addition. I will second that. I, in browsing through the resident apps, I happen to notice that there's a lot of old and outdated versions of our Constitution, bylaws, and other information. Um, I submit to the Constitution and Bylaws Committee to please take it on their shoulders to clean up the uh, obsolete, outdated material on the uh, community apps. Thank you, Bob. Um, I know that's, that committee is busy right now working hard to bring about needed changes. All right. Bob, if I can respond, I'm happy to go through that since I have access to the community apps and look for uh, outdated versions and, and remove them so that everything's contained in the residence apps yeah. button. Thank you. I have uh, a preliminary list of things that you might pay attention to to start with. Thank you. Um, 
I do want to say to the council members, there's goals for the year listed uh, on the back of your agenda. For the audience, our goals this year are to continue to increase the use of electronic communication with the council, the committees, and the residents, and to scan the happenings book, which is out under the stairwell in a hard copy. Sandy intends to scan that happenings book and place it on the resident app button online. So you don't have to come downstairs. You have an interest in the 83 events that are happening, committees, councils, uh, crafts, whatever. It's amazing to me. With the person's name you're to call, you'll be able to do it from your community app. I'm grateful for that from Cam um, Sandy. Now, we do have in the audience a gentleman who has an interest in expanding our goals this year, and I would like for Paul to come forward. Are you still here, Paul? Yep. Paul has an idea, uh, and uh, we've talked about it, and uh, he'd just like to present it for a minute to the group. And I will have for you council members a copy of what Paul is about to say. I'll get it in your mailbox today. Uh, Madam Tra Chairperson, I'd like to present a motion concerning uh, the celebration of the 2020 as the uh, year of uh, celebration for us as the 40th anniversary. The purpose of such a motion would be to uh, renew the vision of the village as an open, inclusive, and progressive community, exploring ways to enhance the retirement experience. The means would be to form a celebration committee representative of the residents of the village with special focus on the history of the culture of the village. The motion itself now begins with Whereas a very large percentage of the village residents have moved in during the last three years, whereas the events of construction today parallel that which occurred 40 years ago, whereas Friendship Village proposes to continue to be at the forefront of the betterment of the retirement existence in the, in the United States, and whereas Friendship Village seeks to celebrate the renewal of life through creative change, I would propose that we commemorate the year 2020 as a year of celebration for the accomplishments of the past and for the uh, renewal and uh, a vision of what the future might hold for those who retire. I might simply add to a word of interpretation of such a motion, and that is it would be for the purpose of, of renewal, of course, and leading us through the changes taking place, but it would also be done in cooperation with motions brought from com the committee to this body and in cooperation with what the administration is doing with regard to the construction and, and other celebratory activities such as the one that Clint uh, Cole mentioned for the month of March. So I'd like to bring that as a motion to, for the uh, group to consider. Thank you. All right, Paul, your full name, please. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Paul McCleary. Paul McCleary has written 10 books. He's the author of 10 books, and his most recent one, Paul, give us the name. Yes, uh, if I can remember that. Come on. Uh, uh, <laughs> the best... The best is yet to be. Is yet to be. So it's available in the library also for sale in the store. So thank you. We will take this uh, suggestion. Okay, Mike Avanich. Have, have a point of order. I just verified with Marty. There's nothing in the Constitution, bylaws, or procedures that provides for or allows a motion from the floor. Really? That's correct. There I'm not you go. saying it shouldn't be considered. 
Yeah. I'm just saying that I think the council. What would you have done, Mike? Well, I'm not sure. I because I really haven't thought this issue through until now. No. I turned that off. I apologize. But I, I think um, that the council needs to find the the way to make that. I'm thinking come about forward. some things. Mike, and I'm going to be talking with Ralph after the meeting, so thank but, you for yeah. your... Thanks. All right. Anything else? Yes. Please, your name, full name, and end of the mic, please. Barbara Bruce. I'm, I just wonder, when he was reading it, I thought there should be a separation there. Uh, one was a proclamation and the other sounded like uh, support for more activities. Barbara, uh, I'm going to have something for you in your mailbox, and we're going to be talking about it later. Uh, yep, this was just an introduction, Barbara. Thank you for your comments. Uh, apparently, I'm uh, needing help up here, you guys. But uh, anyway, anything else that needs to be brought to our attention? All right. I'm six minutes late. Our meeting is adjourned. Uh, village takes care of it, right? Administration pays for it. Right.